Hey, this is Jacob from MotionVFX.com and today we'll show you our long-awaited plugin called M-Saber. You don't have to be a hardcore Star Wars fan to figure out what it does. It creates a realistic lightsaber effect as seen in the most popular franchise in the galaxy. Here's a sample clip created using our plugin. As you can see, it's really organic, it blends well with our footage and simply feels right. Our competition uses simple linear gradients to generate the glow effect, but while that's the easiest solution, the end result often looks cheap and completely unrealistic. Motion VFX is all about quality, so we've spent over six months testing and redesigning several of its elements and took this plugin to a whole new level. Let's take a look at its settings. We'll need a project, so let's create one. I'm going to call it my M Saber. And I know that my clips have been exported in a pretty weird resolution, so I need to make my timeline 1920 by 818 with 24 frames per second, but you'll probably end up using one of Final Cut's presets. Alright, now just drag your footage onto the timeline and we're all set. M-Saber can be found in Final Cut's effects browser, so just click on its icon, find the M-Saber group on the list and drag it onto your video. If you can't see any on-screen controls, make sure that the effect is selected. After that, they will become active. These two circles are meant for matching the effect with your footage. They represent your saber's grip and tip positions, and we've given them different colors so you always know which is which. Moving them triggers two other neat features. As you can see, they cause the plugin to zoom into your mouse cursor's position and even display the current distance between both control points to give you a general idea of the saber's length. Both of them are going to be really helpful when animating the plugin, but first let's check how to control the saber's look, and then we'll move to the animation part. So the first setting on the list is the blend mode, and it pretty much controls the way M Saber is being mixed with your footage. The screen mode usually produces best results, so we've set it as default, but you can also choose add, which of course adds the entire effect to your source image, or normal, which simply puts the saber on top of your clip. Grip and tip scale settings control how thick or thin are the saber's ends. You'll need them, for example, when your saber is being pointed directly at the camera, as in this clip. It appears as if the tip of the stick is thicker than the other end, so we need to adjust the tip of our saber as well. The inner part of the lightsaber is called a core, so core thickness will increase or decrease its overall thickness, so you don't have to change the tip and grip settings independently. In general, we recommend setting the saber's initial size using this parameter and animating the grip and tip scale settings if needed. The core color of course allows you to change its color, and while you can choose any one that you want, including black, usually picking a fairly bright color will be the best way to go. Otherwise, blending it with your background color will bring out some of the unwanted details. There is a way around this, but we'll go into it in a moment. Core Blur lets you expand the core a bit and remove harsh edges that may show up where your core ends and glow starts. The next two settings control the glow's appearance so you can change its range and give it a custom color to match it with any lightsaber from the big screen. Now, since our sword is supposed to be made from light, moving it should leave a visible trail. Depending on your camera's shutter settings, this trail would be longer or shorter. Not only that, the entire shape should glow as well. That's exactly what trail length is for. It tells them Saber to look back a certain amount of frames, analyze your animation and automatically generate a trail of light based on its speed. You can even round its shape using this smooth trail checkbox, which will convert everything to Bezier curves instead of using simple linear shapes. Quick and easy. Alright, we've set our saber's look, now we want to animate it. Normally we would do that by keyframing the tip and grip positions within the inspector, but as you can see these settings aren't here. Well, as we all know, a lightsaber effect needs to be extremely accurate, otherwise it wouldn't match your footage and ruin the end result. While keyframing custom on-screen controls in motion works fine, doing that in FCPX often results in improper timings, so instead of waiting for an update from Apple, we went ahead and created our own animation system that works perfectly in both of these apps, and that's what this panel is for. It's really easy to use too. Just position your tip and grip positions and hit the Add Keyframe button. We've even added our own timeline at the bottom of the view, so you can actually see your keyframes timings. 
This blue triangle indicates our current frame, but remember that it's just a preview. Apple didn't provide us with access to Final Cut's interface, so until they decide otherwise, we won't be able to grab and move it left or right. Anyway, once a keyframe is created, you don't really need to use this button anymore. Just move forward a couple of frames by pressing the right arrow key, reposition the Saber's controls, and the new keyframe will be added automatically. Of course, you can also delete a keyframe from your current time or wipe the entire animation and start from scratch. So, I'm going to turn down the trail length to see what I'm doing and create my animation. As you can see, there's a significant amount of motion blur, so we'll try to match it with the stick's latest position and the trail is going to fill the rest. And done! Now we'll find the frame where your stick is blurred the most and adjust the trail length to cover it up. Great, our M Saber looks pretty nice already. The whole thing matches our footage, but we can see that at the beginning of my clip it's supposed to be behind our actor and it flies over him instead. The solution for this is obvious. We need to mask it out. Once again, both Motion and FCPX provide several masking tools, but as you can see, we've created our own masking system as well. Some of you may think, what the hell? Do you like adding unnecessary features? Well, we do. But this one is actually useful, and here's why. Firstly, when we started working on this plugin, Final Cut didn't have any proper masking tools available. Secondly, by masking M Saber using motions or even Final Cut's masks, you're simply erasing it within the created shape. But is this correct? Do we really want to end up with these hard edges even when feathered? And if we're cutting out a part of our Saber's trail, is it supposed to look like a simple hole? Of course not. We want to actually cover the Saber like a normal light source. This way the glow effect would leak into the masked area. And that's how our masking system works. But enough bragging, let's go back to our project and check it out. We've got our M Saber effect selected, so let's go down to the Masks group and click on this Edit Mask button. Once you do that, a second panel will show up in your viewer. It contains all necessary tools for creating your mask shape, so you've got your Move tool for manipulating the mask shape, Add point for adding control points, Delete point for removing the unnecessary ones, Clear for wiping the whole shape along with its animation, and choosing OK will take you out of the mask edition mode, just like clicking on the highlighted Edit Mask button. Alright, I'm going to lower the mix amount to see what I'm doing and create a simple mask shape using these tools. I'm gonna add as little points as possible, this way animating my shape will be much easier. As you can see, I can reposition the existing points and even set their Bezier handles by clicking and dragging while holding the command key. Great! My shape is almost ready, so I can either click on the first point or switch to the move tool and it will be closed automatically. Nice! See how our glow leaks onto the mask? That's what we call realistic. Ok, but both my saber and the actor are moving, so a static mask won't be enough. We need to animate it over time. Once you pick the mask's move tool, the keyframing panel becomes active again, so the whole process is pretty much the same as when animating the lightsaber's movement. Let's zoom out a bit, select all points and create keyframes for the entire shape. From now on, moving every single one of them will add a new keyframe, so let's go frame by frame and adjust our shape. And done! Everything behaves properly, there are no visible edges, sweet! By the way, usually creating a single animated mask should be enough, but if you can speed up your workflow by adding two or even three simple masks instead of a single complex one, just click on the plus button to add a new shape. Of course, they will interact with each other so you can combine their effects or extract one from the other using the invert mask checkbox. At the bottom of M Saber's parameter list, there are two groups we didn't cover yet, the on-screen controls and post-colorization. The first one lets you disable the zoom feature while moving the Saber's control points, as well as turn off the on-screen timeline. The post-colorization, on the other hand, lets you color correct your Saber without affecting the background. 
This way you can match the effect with your footage even better since you don't have to worry about the blending issues when darkening your course color. It works pretty much like Motion's color balance filter and it's not a published effect. It's a built-in feature so you can access it in Motion as well. Our footage is darker and a bit greenish so let's adjust the highlights a bit and maybe make some corrections to the entire image using Final Cut's built-in tools. We'll make the shadows a bit brighter and maybe midtones too. Alright, this looks better. After matching all of this, you can drop your usual colorization tools, for example MLUT, and give it a more stylized look. The Warrior preset from the Blockbuster pack looks pretty nice, so there you go. A realistic lightsaber created directly inside Final Cut Pro X. Hopefully this quick overview has shown you M-Saber's potential, so pick up your own copy now, have fun with it, as well as the bonus content from the Titles Browser, and... Mm -hmm. May the Force be with you.